requires to be explained to understand what this means. We came 50, 60 years ago to Toronto and all the students of sociology had the prediction for us. We were a small, small community. We hadn't brought religious leaders with us. And the chances of survival as an entity of our own were almost nil. History has proven that circumstances are those. You come and there's a melting pot. You just melt into the other congregations in the city and slowly you become, you become somebody else. And you find you, you have moments perhaps social moments where you get together and you remind yourselves from your past and uh, you go on, you go on in that big melting pot. And that's what was expected of us. Akadosh Baruch Hu had different plans. And not only did we not disappear, we made a tremendous mark in the community. We established ourselves with the efforts of people who did not even think that they would ever lead, who became true leaders. They found in themselves that which they didn't know existed. And you know what we had in this community. Somebody would have told me then that two young professional laymen were going to write these books in so much detail, at so much precision, and with the amount of knowledge that it took to bring it to fruition, I think most of us would have said it's a beautiful dream, and it will remain a dream. Can't happen. It happened. It's here. Against all odds, against all possibility, History will be written of a small community with very little economical or commercial existence on its on the members level. We're not the richest community around by all means, not. And yet we're able to have the congregations that we have. We're able to have the community that we have. And we're able to keep every single minhag, every single custom that meant so much to our forefathers, that made who we are. And when you look at the work that was done here, where every detail, every detail was recorded. It took years, but the result is phenomenal. If it would have taken another 20 years, it could still be very good, still be more than we expected and what anybody expected. So to tell you how phenomenal this is and how personally what it means to me and uh, seeing the process and slow progress of the community to see where we are today. There's no question that Akadosh Shorukhu was extremely kind to us and provided us the right people to come along and to keep the fire of Sephardism in its authentic way, the real Sephardism. And that means halakha, that means every detail of halakha. It does not mean folkloric, that you can get. That's easy to get. There's plenty of written, plenty of books, plenty of movies. You won't forget the folklore anymore. But to be able to learn a simple halakha with the customs that are only ours, and specifically ours, 
and to teach them and to teach them to use the Kahara and do what do is a great, great moment. I could stand here and talk to you about the importance of the Hakim, but I want to tell you that we did an amazing job in the preface so that you had explaining explaining the importance of customs. Uh, so I'm not going to take up time of you reading. Go home and open it and read about about the importance of keeping the customs that we have. The only thing I want to tell you is one small detail that perhaps gives us a true understanding of what the customs are. The Kapamim tell us so, uh, this week's uh, Zohar, we find that uh, the, the Zohar tells us that in the Pasuk by Yehu Echad, he wrote the son of Yem Bishpen, the word it, the brothers went to pasture the sheep of Yaakov Avinu to the city of Shechem. And the word it has dots on top. And the Zohar says not only has the dots unnecessary, the whole word it is unnecessary. And why is it there? To tell us that the Shekhinah was I'm doing the short so we get time to the real speakers to tell us all they have to say. Yeah, but that it is there to tell us that the Shekhinah had been with them. There were 10 tribes now. The Yosef and Benjamin were not there, and the ten brothers were there, and at that point the Shekhinah was there. And the Shekhinah was there all through to the tribes who time the time and began that the tribes had, the twelve tribes had the Shekhinah with them, and the approval of the Shekhinah in this whole event of Yosef and the brothers, and they tell us I mean, that at the time of Har Sinai, when Akadosh Baruch came down to give the Torah, he opened up the skies and they were able to see the Malachim coming down with him. And the Malachim were coming in groups, in camps, with banners. They were, and the Ami said, when they saw that, they wanted themselves to have a similar setup of the camp where there would be three tribes on each each side of the four sides, and and each tribe would have its own band. And Am Yisrael has been composed of those twelve banners, twelve tribes, forever and ever. And the Mikubalim tell us that what happened over there is that the Malachim. They're there to bring down the honor of God to this world and to point out the various different traits, the various different, different results of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Each group of Malachim represents the different results. Adam Israel, when they saw that, they said, We too want to have a specialty. Each tribe should have a specialty of, you know, and have an opportunity to bring the Kabod of Hashem to this world. And to end off, we have something very interesting that we have that there is 12 gates, now you see 12 is the count of the number, 12 is the great number because Shem Habaya, if you, the various, the various combinations of those four letters are 12, the 12 different combinations of them. So each group of Malachim is responsible for one of the combinations of the Shema Baya. Each tribe too is responsible to bring forth to the world one of the combinations of the Shema Baya. And the Abhidhar writes in the name of the Abhidhar that there in the, in the sky there is the Shema Sishani, there is 12 gates, Neged Yud Bet Shabbatim. For each one of the Shabbatim, there is a gate. V'chol echad v'echad olet tefilato der sha'ar echad. And each one of the Shabbatim, the tefilah reaches through a very specific gate that belongs to that Shabbat. And therefore, 
והם השערים הנתקלים בשירי ספר יחזקאל, כי לא תגיד יחזקאל, ולא עובדי טוב בשל אביב ובבית. And we write that, that uh, these girls, they're not equal, each one is different. Menachem, Dama Tefilot Meshunot, and therefore the Tefilot too, each one is different. Lachem, Kol Echad Bechad, Naul Le'avi, Keminak Sede Tefilato, that's why it's important that everyone pray according to his customs, and not to change the customs wrongs that we have in the Tefilot. כי מי יודע אם הוא משבט ההוא ואין לפי תפילתו או לא? Because who knows what tribe which one of us belongs and if you end up sending it to the wrong gate, it won't go in. There is a, tra- a gate for each tribe and the Abizal says you have to make sure that you do not change a single minag in tefillah, a single word in the tefillah because although they're very similar, all the tefillot, all the sigurim that there is, but each one can only reach the gates of heaven that are designated for, for that Kehila, for that group of people. And each one should remain strongly with the leader. Imagine, imagine praying your whole life and knocking at the wrong door, right? <laughs> this is what we don't want to do, but this is what a changing of Minagin could do. And it teaches us the importance of each Minag, of each word in the Kehila that not to change it and to continue to be that which we've seen from a forefather that was given to us. It's the riches that we have, that's the wealth, that's the legacy that we need generation after generation. Tonight, we're extremely, extremely blessed by this new exposition of our Minhagin that was done with a tremendous amount of care I know what it is to write, and I know what it is to write halakha. And all that you know, you never put down on a piece of paper, even that which you know. The simplest of things, you need to check. When you're writing it down, then you start asking yourself questions. And you need to go and check the source and you say, I didn't know this because I was a child. It's, a, it's fine to know it when you were a child. It's different when you have to put it down on a piece of paper. It's different when it has to be published. You have to be extremely careful to do the making job. The really, I mean all that I say about the, the, the milestones that this means, the spiritual milestones that this is for our community. Who would have thought that Hashem blessed us and gave us these young men who put themselves out from their businesses, from their families, took away time from everything that was special to them in order to create this wonderful work that each and every one of you should read carefully. You don't have to read it in one sitting, but surely, take slowly, page by page, and the amount of knowledge that you will get and the understanding of the results that we do and our customs will be forever inscribed in your hearts and your children, and we should continue to address Hashem, having the blessing of Hashem in our community, that we should continue being able to produce such young men with tremendous amount of knowledge and dedication to want to do this and leave for generations after the truth of our minagim and that the beauty of those minagim which is that all and bless them with Amen. 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 and current Rosh Kolel of Linz in Los Angeles. He's well known for his works in Bili Halakha, also on Moroccan uh, Judy, Moroccan Halakhic uh, Torah, and um, in Nagim. He wrote on his famous works, Magen Avot, which has already published a little free story, and Vezat uh, Hashem many more. He also, if I may say, contributed immensely to this project. Many 
Many years ago, when uh, Ariel and I were at the Kol Yisrael Moshe, I see them spending hours and hours delving into the halachot of the Moroccan rabbanim. It is no for, it is not for them to do. Call upon Rabbi Really? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Pause. No. Stop, stop it. it. Stop it.